Um, let's turn to Luke ch chapter 6. <clears throat> On the board up here, I have uh, four things written. All right. Yeah. Speaking of Jesus, his teachings, teaching, teaching. His ministry, his work, and his life. Do you want what's behind door number one? <laughs> so we want to talk about these. We want to start with, with his teachings. And we want to look at that here in Luke 6. I've been in Luke 6 several times recently it just seemed just seems right seems good <clears throat> this is um, Jesus speaking and he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said blessed be ye poor for yours is the kingdom of God blessed are ye that hunger now for you shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. So that's encouraging. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm assuming there'll be laughter in heaven. I'm, <clears throat> even that was a joke, but never mind. <laughs> Verse 22, blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. <clears throat> Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. But woe unto you that are rich, for ye have received your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. <clears throat> We're going to read some more here, but this is Jesus' teachings. This is teaching. And we want to examine all of these areas that I have written on the board in light of a certain truth that we'll get to towards the end, but we'll build on it. Verse 27, but I say unto you <clears throat> which hear, love your enemies. Do good to them that hate you. Bless them that curse you. Pray for them which despitefully use you. We're, we're going to keep reading, but um, these are Jesus' teachings. And, uh, you know, how many of you are following these teachings pretty well? Doing pretty good. Okay, just, just checking. You're all going to hell then. All right. <clears throat> uh, verse 29, And unto him that smiteth thee on one cheek, offer also the other. And him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. For if ye love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. And if you do good to them which do good to you, what thank have you? For sinners also do even the same. And if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what thank have you? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great and ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful as your father also is merciful. Judge not, 
and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. <clears throat> all right. Uh, just an interesting fact. Sit up there a little. Interesting fact is that <clears throat> most of the teachings of Jesus are not in the epistles. They're not written in there, they're not expounded on, they're not, you know. I mean, just this list right here. I mean, you got given it shall be given unto you, that one's quoted. Um, but not a whole lot of Jesus' teachings are expounded upon, are set forth as this is the teachings of the master and you need to follow his teachings. Okay, now, anybody have a comment on that or a question? Because I think probably in most churches, if somebody stood up there and said, Jesus' teachings aren't in the New Testament beyond the Gospels, they would go, what are you talking about? And, but I, if, you, if you question that, then I challenge you to just start going through the epistles and um, just finding out how often stuff is said. Last Supper, it's mentioned there. Um, the words of Jesus. But it, um, well, let me say this. I had a couple of friends years ago, actually, can you believe that? And uh, <clears throat> one of them um, <clears throat> was heavily into the epistles and particularly the teachings of Paul, particularly the teachings of Paul, okay? And he had a friend who at a certain juncture he didn't, he didn't hang out with him all the time, but he would visit him and share in his church from time to time. And he went to that, that friend's church. And when he came back, he said, well, he, he, is, um, he has kind of gotten away from anything Paul teaches. He said that um, he holds to the teachings of Jesus since Jesus is the one died on the cross and whatever else. He also said that this friend said that the teachings of Jesus are very different than what Paul's teaching. Okay? You, you do realize that I like to try to make you think. <laughs> I mean, I'm always trying to challenge you. It's important that we not just, you know, swallow everything that we hear and everything. We need different angles and different ideas so that we can go before the Lord and weigh these things. It's, it's important uh, that, that each of us be able to do that. So, um, um, well, I won't tell you, tell you my response to that. <laughs> um, I guess I will, but it won't be right now then. <clears throat> but, but when you think about it, there is, it, it does seem sort of strange, doesn't it, that Jesus' teaching, by and large, is not a mainstay of the epistles, okay? So that should make us think, and that should, that should, it's good to question. It is, it's good to question. It's not good to question to the point of, you know, if you don't agree with them, you kill them or something, but it's good to question. So, um, Jesus is setting forth these practical things, and there's a bunch of them, and they come from a bunch of different angles, and they, um, 
they come directly out of his mouth. And when, and in fact, the uh, uh, Sermon on the Mount was one of the first things he taught, one of the very first times that he, cha he taught. And this is the things that he said. <clears throat> All right, so, um, there is something to this that we should say, what is going on then? I mean, if you've never really considered that most of Jesus' teachings aren't expounded on and filled with, and Jesus said this, and he said this, and this, this, and all of that, then we should at least consider that, okay? So, let's go on to his ministry, Jesus' ministry, all right? So, his ministry was that he healed, he did deliverances, he, he did miracles, he fed the 5,000 and uh, so many other kind of miracles of healing and what have you, deliverances. <clears throat> and so uh, an area that I've touched on before for some of you that have been around here for a while is this. Um, Jesus took care of the poor, right? I mean, that, you know, he ministered to them. Um, and yet, when he left, we have more poor people in the world than we ever have. Jesus fed the hungry. And yet Jesus did nothing to make it where we, the Globally, we would be set with food or whatever. We wouldn't have to deal with issues of hunger or poverty. Jesus cast out demons. And yet there are still people around that are demon-possessed. Okay. Many of the things that maybe deep within us we think and hold dear like Jesus came and he, he, he fed 5,000 and he did all this but maybe we've never really settled into the fact that um, he, he left and he didn't take care of poverty he didn't take care of sickness he didn't take care of all of the major ills that most people are concerned with. That can be disconcerting if you've never thought of that. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, what are we doing here then, <laughs> you know? But these are things that we need to face, to look at, to understand, to consider and to go before the Lord and say, you know, there's some, that, this, this class tonight has some very disconcerting things because I thought, you know, I mean, it's obvious that we have poor. It's obvious that we still have sickness, great diseases and all kind of stuff like that. But when you say the Son of God came, he healed, he healed sicknesses of all kinds, he raised the dead, he fed the hungry, but when he left, he didn't set up anything to deal with all of that. Okay. So it's another thing where we have to, it's okay to question. It's okay to say, what is going on then? Why, why are these things so prevalent when maybe in our minds, um, even though we were aware of them, we kind of thought that they were dealt with. So that's his, his ministry. Let's talk about his work. Um, well, he, part of the work that he did on the cross for us was new birth, right? 
being born again. In fact, what was the, <laughs> I, I wrote down new, new birth when I walked up here because I wanted to add it to my list and I wrote down new birth and as I was writing birth, it automatically spelled out new birthday. <laughs> it's still on there. Anyway, <laughs> new birthday. Uh, speaking of Dennis. <clears throat> Um, and um, I, I wrote simple phrases here. No hell. No hell. No. <laughs> and we should sing that joyfully. I, uh, I still have one. I gave one away, but I still have a pen that is, you know, the symbol for no or where no, no parking is around with a thing through it. And it has an L in it. And I wear it during Christmas. And you'd be surprised how many people will stare at that and go, what does that mean? And it's Christmas, no L, you know. <laughs> and I have the ho, 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 but it's just ho to the power of three. Yeah. <laughs> All of that being totally irrelevant to what we're trying to talk about here. No hell. <laughs> no punishment. Woo, this is getting good, huh? <clears throat> um, reconciled. Blessed. But, you know, no hell was... Well, let's say, let's say no punishment. No punishment was, was connected to sin. And so sin brought about punishment, and from that came hell as a factor. And thank you. Welcome. Old faithful ones. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> and yet, sin is rampant. Even in the church, right? So we go, Jesus, what are you doing here? <laughs> Did you really do anything? <clears throat> we, we would never say that. But then the the final one is his life, his life. And what we find is that his life came, his life died on a cross, his life came into those of us who are born again. Amen. All of these things only came about in the first place because of his life. So that makes us begin to wonder because if all those things that we've, we've said, his teachings, his teachings. I mean, you know, I know people that their whole existence in life is, this is his teachings and I'm sharing with you the teachings of Jesus and whatever. But so let's, let's compare that to his life, okay? If we go back to Luke 6, he lifted up his eyes on his disciples. Ah, you got to like that. And said, blessed are the poor. Blessed are they that hunger. Blessed are ye that weep now. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you. And da, 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 da. rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Um, um, but I say unto you which here love your enemies do good to them which hate you bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you and unto him that smiteth thee on one cheek offer also the other and him that taketh away thy cloak forbid not to uh, get, give him your coat these when Jesus came when Jesus came Maybe I can just 
mark that down. Okay, so this is going to be a timeline. When Jesus came and lived with his parents, that's fine. Then his ministry started at a certain juncture. And that's when he began to teach. When his ministry started, he also began to teach. And he taught this stuff. And how many of us anywhere do you know that have perfectly fulfilled just this little bit that we're that we've read. I mean, it's it's extreme for human nature. In fact, can I say it? It's impossible for human nature. But in in his coming and teaching that, there was going to be a day where he would die on the cross and he would rise again and we could be born of his nature and born of his spirit so that his teachings wouldn't be the issue. His life would fulfill the teachings, his life in us. Amen? His life in us. Okay, well, maybe that helps answer. <laughs> why his teachings aren't so so prevalent because why because he knew that if he could be the life on the inside of us he wouldn't have to teach it into us he would live it through us and we would say there's no way i can live this thank god i have the life of christ to him be all glory Right? And in real way, a very real way. If, if it's not real to you right now, reread this and then go out, spend the next two weeks trying to do all this. God will send somebody your way that will surely cross one of these things. You know. <clears throat> so, um, so that, still, that only answers part of it, why his teachings aren't in, in so much in the epistles. The main teachings of Paul and even Peter and, and John in different ways, but the main teachings of the New Testament in relationship to the epistles all pertain to that cross where he died but gave us his life. But in that cross, we understand we died. See, it's not we understand now his teachings amen it's not a it's not trying to 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 get hold of all of this and make it real in us it's trying to get hold of the reality that as paul said in colossians 3 3 if i'm not mistaken for ye are dead and your life is hid with christ and god when he shall appear, when he who is your life, it doesn't say he who is your king, soon coming king, who, he who is your savior, he who is, you know, the Jewish Messiah shall appear. It says, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with God in Christ, and with Christ in God, and he, when he who is your life shall appear, and the word appear there relates to reveal then shall you appear with him, in union with him, and his life will fulfill what? All the things that follow in verse 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 of Colossians 3. All of the things that are just as impossible there, except for he's more specific now. Instead of don't do this, do that, which is the law. That was nothing more than the law. Thou shalt, thou shalt not. Instead of it being that, it is put off the old man and put on the new man. How do you do that? For ye are dead. And this is the basic teaching, not just of Colossians, but of the, of the epistles. God ordered it that way. God ordered it. What we needed was not, um, okay, so in the, the old covenant, it was, Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not do this. And of course, there were 
um, at least 17 other commandments. <laughs> Did I come short there, Mallory? <clears throat> Hundreds. And so, so then what, what, what do we do? We leave that, oh, I'm free from the law. Now, you know, if they take your coat, you know, cloak, give them your coat. We go, I ain't taking him because that guy's, he's just trying to be a thief. Love your enemies. Do good to them. What? That's harder than, <laughs> you know. I mean, I want to kill him and, never mind. <clears throat> so that's, you know, we're, we're still struggling with the same thing if it's just teaching. If it's, if it's on tables of stone, it's impossible. But if it's written on the fleshly tables of our heart, if, it's, if it is the new covenant is a thing of the heart, which is his heart. What is the new covenant? I shall give them a new heart. My spirit I will put in them. That's the first words of, in the Old Testament that you get of the new covenant. My heart, my spirit, you know. But we don't fully grasp that because we get saved. We say, Lord, save me from hell. Okay, yeah, just, I don't want to go to hell either. Okay. But that's not the message. That's not the message. That, that shouldn't. We, we say we receive Jesus, but in our minds, we received a ticket that would keep us from being punished for, punished for all the stuff we did, and we don't go to hell. And we go, this is good, because, you know, I don't, you know, I really deserve that. But we appreciate Jesus on a level of something he did 2,000 years ago. We look to the cross 2,000 years ago instead of the one that should be working in us. Amen? So, and that cross is everything from, you know, um, for ye are dead in relationship to the world. I'm crucified to the world, the world unto me, to, to, uh, uh, Hebrews 2.14 that talks about through death he destroyed him that had the power of death, that is the devil, to every aspect from sin to the old man, don't know you not, the old man is crucified, all of it relating to a death that took place on the cross that saves us not from hell but from ourself. Or you could say the hell that is ourself. <laughs> At least that's how God views it. And God says, I will put my son in you. I will put the answer, not in your hands, not in your head, but inside of you. I won't have to. And, and he says, you will no longer, this is part of the new covenant, you will no longer teach every man the teachings because you have a new heart. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And it goes on to describe the cross, the, the path to the cross. So, so then you begin to realize the, the first part of this, his teachings, you begin to realize this, this astounding thing that we're not, that the New Testament epistles hardly share Jesus' teaching, which should be profoundly make you go, what? Until you realize he taught it and then he came inside of you to live it. Yes. Amen? He came inside of you to live it because if he didn't, you're in trouble. <laughs> Read Luke 6. If he didn't, you're in you'll never be able to live up to that. But after, after his death and his resurrection, they don't the disciples don't come in and go, look, I heard him say this. You need to do this. They don't. They don't. They learn by the Spirit of God what happened at the cross. And they learn that there, there, not 
not his teachings way down here, is what God always wanted. He always wanted his son, but he wanted his son in us. And then his ministry, well, he gave us power to lay hands on the sick and they'll recover, to cast out demons, to, um, to do or I always hate to say to do miracles because all of this, I w my response is always this. Somebody gets healed and they say, oh, Randy, you prayed for me and thank God you healed me. And I go, I don't, I don't have a clue how to heal anybody. You know, do I have to, do I put it in a certain spot or you know, quick or slow? Or I, I don't know. I don't know any of it. I, you, you, I know you're thinking, well, you're really dumb to be a pastor. I don't know. I don't. Well, I know Jesus, <laughs> and I know he lives in me, and I know that he can do anything he wants, but I know something beyond that. I know that it's his life in me that is and will do whatever he wants, and it all is still like the teachings went back to his life, couldn't be fulfilled without his life, so the ministry couldn't be done without his life. Now, we're well aware of that when we think of his ministry because we always focus on, you know, the, 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 the magic stuff, if you will, the, the miracles and the supernatural events and stuff like that. So we know, well, most of us know. I mean, some of us think that we're the anointed of God and, you know, I'm God's anointed so I'll, I can heal you. But, you know, many of us know it's not me. If it happens, it's him. And glory, all glory to him. But we haven't yet learned that with Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. And I remember when I first read that, and I said, well, that's, that's not right, Lord. I can do all kind of stuff. And he said, yeah, it's nothing. You can do nothing. What are you doing? Nothing. It's, I don't count that. I put my son into you so that all glory would come to him. But we, can, we get involved in things and we think that it's us or we think, you know, well, I'll get in this area because I'm good in that area and people be real impressed, you know, with me. We'll try getting in an area that you have no expertise and no desire. Just try jumping in there and, and saying, Lord, I need you every second. I need you. I don't know. I don't have it. I don't even want it, but I'm here, and I want to be your vessel. And then, then you get to see the real stuff. Because then when something really happens in that area, you go, it was the Lord. You know what I mean? You know it. You go, that, that was the Lord. Whereas over here, if, you, if you're just riding the, the, the train of your own abilities, you're probably doing it, and it's probably all about you. And, you're, and you can even say, well, it was the Lord. And he'd go, no, it wasn't. That was you. You know, you're the one that's good at that. And you never looked to me once or thought about me in the process. You just dove in because you had no fear, no um, uh, fear and trembling of your lack and of your weakness when you get in that area. You don't have any of that. It's rare. It's just rare that you find somebody that will just get in an area that they, I mean, even churches, they, have, they, they try to work the program where when someone new comes in, well, let's figure out what your gifts are. Well, are they really gifts or is that what you were endowed with at birth, you know? Well, you sing really good. You know, you have a beautiful voice. So what we're going to do is we're going to use you to clean all the toilets in the fellowship. Well. What are you talking about? I can, you know, I will wow the crowds. 
I know, that's the problem. Wow us with that toilet. You understand what I'm saying. I'm trying to make a point here, you know. It's, I look at it as a sad thing because we're, we're intentionally forming our Christianity into a way that the Lord can't show up. And then we wonder why the Lord isn't, isn't around so much, you know. So, let's see. His work. So basically, in his ministry, I'm saying, it's going to take his life, okay? It's all going to ultimately have to be his life. You can be a branch. You get to be a branch. You okay with that? <laughs> but it'll be his fruit, not yours. <clears throat> all right, his work. No hell, no hell. So there's, no, there's just... You know, okay, so you're not going to hell. That's his work. No, that's him dying. That's still his life and the giving of it. That's all it is, his life and the giving of it. Father, forgive her for she has sneezed. No punishment. Reconciled. Folks, we are reconciled in him, not just by him. Do you know that? We've been brought near by the cross and then made one, and now we are one with him as his body and the vehicle of his teachings. No. The vehicle of his ministry, no, the vehicle of his life. Let him minister. Let him be the fulfillment of the teaching. Does that mean that we don't need to read Luke 6? No, I think it's a good idea because it's a good measuring stone. It's a good barometer of how much of his life is in us at this stage. You know what I mean? I mean, it, it's, it's helpful. It really is helpful. We go, I don't want to read that because then I'll see how short I am of how little of Christ I have. Well, I think you should, like, that should be a, a thing that you should change about you. I think finding out how little of him there is will help motivate, or should help you, instead of you just going, <laughs> what's the use? I've tried to do all that. What's, there is no use then if you're doing it, trying it. If you succeeded, you still haven't succeeded because it's not him. It's not his life, okay? So, you know, reconciled, blessed. What a great one there, reconciled. Did you have your hand up? Yes. And, it, and it's, it was his life, his nature, his way that gave himself in that way, which is Luke 6, 20 through 38, is that what it was? <clears throat> it's a perfect picture of his nature. It's just spelling out his nature. It's saying, do all of this, and we say, that's, that's hard. And he goes, no, it's impossible. And, and he's saying, but... With man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. We go, well, then God help me to do this. And he's going, still saying the wrong things, you know. It's you're still trying to get man where it's possible. Lord, show me I'm crucified with Christ so that Christ lives in me. And he goes, woo, Holy Spirit, sick him. 
That's good news to him. So he doesn't get much good news. <laughs> so I think I'll quit because it's the, most of the time I either stop right at eight or go over and we have another class coming up after this. So we'll stop here. How about if we just have a little prayer? Is that okay? <clears throat> Father, there's it's just the simplicity of the fact that it's all about your son. You put him in us. He died for us. He put us to death so that you could get, Father, your son in, in an increase through other vessels. And... Father, we just work so hard and we try to figure things out and we try to um, grasp things that really is just as simple as it being your son, your slain lamb son. And so we ask you to begin to pave the way in us. We know that there's many, many, many things yet that we have as blockages, but and you don't just, you didn't just send Israel into the land to drive out all the inhabitants in one day. It took a while. But we want all the inhabitants out of us. And we want, we want your son to possess the land through his body. And we want all glory to go to him. So make it not doctrine but make it real make our hunger real make it powerful in us that will bless it a day that hunger and thirst for they shall be filled father may we get past just needing a snack may we get to a place where we hunger and we thirst for this for the lord for your son So we ask you to do it in Jesus' name, and we ask you to bless the next class with your spirit and your movements, spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that Christ may be known, that you, Father, may be known by your Son, the express image of you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.